February 11, 2019, the Venezuela in Turmoil edition. We start with a rare op-ed piece from the Wall Street Journal by Mary Anastasia O'Grady, where she takes a look at the current uh, political situation in uh, Venezuela, but uh, really focuses on a couple of things for the compliance practitioner. What really matters politically, she says, is the effect of Treasury's new rules mandating mandating that payments for Venezuelan oil go into the account for the government of the interim president, Juan Guaido, as um, it's making it difficult for the Maduro regime to secure payments for oil, and this severe cash flow disruption will increase the odds, at least it's hoped, that Maduro will be moved out of uh, the presidency. Next up, an article from the South African. There is a <clears throat> group called the Scorpions, which was once a mighty crime-fighting un- unit in the South African police, feared in po- by politicians and public lawbreakers alike. The uh, Scorpions may reappear to fight corporate malfeasance uh, and corruption in the nation. If the Scorpions do return, it will signal um, that uh, the uh, government is extraordinarily serious about investigating uh, corruption in South Africa. Next up is a story from the BBC. And while you might think that corruption costs uh, third world nations or emerging nations uh, money, a lot of money indeed, <clears throat> the EU Home Affairs Commissioner has presented a report that says the extent of corruption in Europe is breathtaking and it costs the EU economy at least 120 billion euros. That's uh, 99 million pounds per year. Uh, and she concedes that the cost was probably higher. The This was a survey of three quarters of uh, Europe and the extent is certainly breathtaking uh, with Sweden noted to be a country with the least number of problems, at least in this regard. And finally, a story from the Wall Street Journal, where a Turkish subsidiary of a U.S. company hid its Iranian activity from the U.S. parent. Uh, Cole Morgan, a Virginia-based maker of motors and automation platforms, bought a Turkish affiliate at 2013 Ilsim. Ilsim continued to do business with Iran for two years after the deal was closed, despite Colgram's efforts to get Ilsim to comply with U.S. sanctions. Uh, The settlement really, uh, there was a settlement with the uh, Department of Treasury, and it highlighted the importance of performing heightened due diligence when U.S. persons are uh, directly or indirectly acquire companies with pre-existing relationships with sanctioned persons and jurisdictions. It also identified compliance measures the company took pre- and post-acquisition and specific remedial actions. Uh, this really presents a uh, interesting case and demonstrates not only that you must do due diligence on any acquisition target, but you must move in quickly to remediate any problems that may exist. <laughs>